My name is Roberto Alonso, and I am the treasurer of the museum, of the History and Discovery Museum. And today I'm honored, and was given the honor, actually, by my friends at the, at the board, uh, that at this moment I represent. And welcome, Bonnie. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. I, I trust your holidays were wonderful. They were. And when you get to spend time with family, how can it not be wonderful? Exactly. exactly. Except for the wayward uncle or something with a bad temper who insists on talking politics and so on and so forth. Other than that, I, I'm with you 100%. But aren't politics off the table during the holidays? Absolutely so. Absolutely so. When you find the formula to make it work and stick, please share it with me. So, Bonnie, I've known you for a while, and uh, I know you to be a fairly cosmopolitan person, very sophisticated. What brought you to the Keys, to our piece of paradise? I've been coming to the Keys since the 80s, and I absolutely love it here. I was part of a research diving group out of Jacksonville where we were trained a year-long training course to monitor and place artificial reefs and count the fish and do water quality analysis and study little invertebrates in the lab. And so coming to the Keys was part of our training, part of where we did our research. And I fell in love with the Keys. How can you not? That is true. That's a good question. That's a very good question. I love the Keys for so many, many reasons. Tell me, Bonnie, what are your plans for our museum? There's a lot of plans, and it isn't just me. It's a whole host of staff and board and volunteers that really want to make this place the best it can be. So one of the things, you listen to the people, and one of the things they've said is, you're not open enough. We really would like to see and be able to come at a convenient time. Most of our visitors, when you're closed on Sunday, maybe it's a rainy day and they want to have access to the museum. So we've just this week opened back up five days a week and we hope to open up six days a week by the end of the month. So yes, that would be really nice. We do realize that because of our beautiful aquariums that are hosted by Moat, marine laboratory that we need to give them time to ensure that those tanks stay the most beautiful pristine areas that they can so we'll probably never open seven days a week giving them time to do all the work that they need to do and in fact this weekend a lobster just molted in the tank wow. that was really awesome mm. so that's part of the experience that's part of coming absolutely. to the museum yes. and we absolutely love it so that's just one of the things we also recognize the history is made up of so many people and so many backgrounds and there's so much to tell. You cannot fit it all in 7,500 square feet of space. But if we can swap things out, if we can update, if we can research, which I know you're on the museum committee, yes, and there are so many areas that can be explored. Take musicians. Do you know that the Beatles were actually in the Keys? So you don't know until you study, you research, and you look at this history. It includes Cubans such as Jose Martí. Martí. So we want to cover some of this spectacular history for the people. Yes. And we think that that's, that's going cool. to be fantastic. Another complaint I heard were a lot of times Isla Mirada or um, conch centric, which we have our conch behind the camera, sixth generation, absolutely vital and important to our history. But um, they'd like to see a greater geographic area covered. So we did some posts a few weeks ago of the Anglers Club up at Ocean Reef, um, talking about Anthony's that's been on the overseas highway forever. So looking at trying to make sure we're inclusive in absolutely. everything that we do, yeah for our post for the public. Mm -hmm. Inclusivity and diversity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So there are many more things. You want to hear any more? Do you yes, want to move on? <laughs> okay. We all, do. we all want to hear more. We have a neat art exhibit opening January 20th. I'm not responsible for this, but I get to help make it happen. Carlos Guzman, who is a Cuban artist, yes. and I heard he's got some extremely strong history. Can yes. you share some of that? 
Well, uh, he is a great artist, and he, through, in his work, you can see the influence of great masters like Liam, uh, like the name Magritte, uh, and you can you can see the development of the master craftsman in Guzman. I enjoy his art in Mengsli. It's very imaginative, colorful. He is a master of light and shadows. I, I am very excited on the, on the exhibit. You guys have done, my congratulations to both of, both of you. You've done terrific work, terrific. I know it, absolutely. Now getting back to you, okay. young lady. So the exhibit will be here from January 20th through April 24th. It will be part of the experience for anybody coming to the museum, which is exciting. Yes. It, I've seen some of the pieces, there are 22, some will be available for sale, so that's exciting. And I, I can't want, cannot wait, it happens, uh, the opening oh, will be on Art Walk evening, the third Thursday of the month, the mm -hmm. 20th, so okay. we're hoping to work with Freebie so that you park once and you can come back and forth and enjoy the entire Art Walk evening. So we're looking we forward to that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you have a distinguished career in nonprofits. What would you say was one of your biggest accomplishments in that distinguished career before joining the museum? One of the things that I've been said to do is bring people together. And I was the head of a land preservation organization up in Northeast Florida, and it covered all seven counties. And what you saw is massive development. This is St. Augustine, this is Jacksonville, this is you know, Clay County, everything's expanding. Our entire state is expanding in growth. But all of these areas had little pieces that they'd protected, and every one of the planners and conservation agents at each of the counties wanted to preserve their little piece. So we organized as a land preservation organization, a day where all these counties could come together, present what they had preserved, show what they wanted to preserve. And as a result, 300 people in a room, they were able to create an area map that covered all 300, all seven counties and be able to make a plan that's still in place today for the preservation of those animals, the wildlife in our community Absolutely. are planned for, which that's the kind of work that impacts entire communities, states, and saves tons of our wildlife. So it's exciting. Hmm, that's fascinating. People, for people that don't really know you, is there one particular thing that you care to talk about and share with us that otherwise these people might not know about you? Well, when I took the position at the museum, you sit there and you go, well, I've never run a museum before. Why me? Well, the board had faith in what I've done, yes. but it's different. But I think it's a culmination of your experiences in life that puts you where you are. I have been passionate about history all of my life. I'm always in an old cemetery or, you know, looking at mm -hmm. natural spaces and outdoor places. And so, one of the things that was important to me when my grandmother passed, she owned a town in California on Old Route 66. Mm. And when we sold it, we had this opportunity to sell it for a lot more, but this gentleman wanted to preserve it and preserve the legacy. And so she sold it for less in order that that town could remain wow, important to the community. Wonderful. So that was really, really special to me. And I was a part of that whole transaction. So. That is what really cool. Interesting, what a, an engaging, interesting story. What am I forgetting about in regards to your plans for the museum? Am I forgetting something uh, that's really important to you? I don't know. We want to be inclusive. We want this to be a museum for the community and for the visitors, something that everybody has something to do. We also have the um, Jerry Wilkinson Research Library. So we get a lot of contributions and we want to engage interns and students in some of the things that we do, allow them to help us 
organize and scan some of the images and maybe get them up on the website so that the community can help us ID some of these older photos. We want to also capture some of the untold stories. The, the neatest part is, and the saddest part is, is that we have a lot of history in the Keys. It goes back several generations of yes. our conks, our sixth and seventh generations. It has a rich, rich history. And the problem we've got are people are passing on. And we're sitting there going, oh my God, if we could have just recorded this, if we could have just done this. So I think we're gonna focus a lot on trying to capture these. We would like to show them and display them and have them available in some way. We might come up with multiple means of releasing them. But I think also there's those who might not be recognized that still have stories. So I would love to be able to, in the near future, set up a day that people could come in here, just like StoryCorps, NPR, and tell us their little stories, even if it's just three to five minutes, that we could capture some of those special moments that people have that they go, nobody will care, but it's important to them. So through that, we may find some even richer stories that we knew nothing about. So we hope that we could do something like that. And, and you know, one of the things that has just occurred is we've just um, transitioned to a new curator and she's got incredible ideas and incredible opportunity for everything that we do here to become just everything that has been done here at this museum has been first rate, quality, incredible people who jobs I have to now fill. And it's going to be hard. But if we all pull together and we all do the best that we can, I think we can make this museum just even better. I Don't know how, so. but we're going to work on it. Mm -hmm. I believe so. I agree with you 100%. Could you tell us a little bit more about the new curator? Well, I'll Her say wow. that she has just come on board and maybe if you're all good and are interested, we'll feature her next week on wonderful, our talk. Wonderful, so. wonderful, wonderful. I just had the opportunity to meet her. She's a delight. She seems like a delight. Anything else that we're missing, uh, Bonnie, for this first interview? I think that you have been absolutely incredible in dragging all this information out of me. It was, it was a lot of fun. We always have fun. Thank you, absolutely. And that's what the museum is about. Engagement of the community, representation of the community, and fun. Yes. It must be fun. So thank you all for sharing this moment with our wonderful executive director. And uh, we hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.